Welcome to our next video. Our next video is all about web scraping. This is about taking code, Python code, and collecting um, the data off web pages. And this can be very useful if you're going to be de dealing with data scraping of things like the stock market or data scraping things like sports stats, etc. There's lots of reasons and lots of uses to scrape data off web pages. So we have downloaded here to our um, RP, REPL.IT, we've downloaded our packages. This is our Python IDE that is online. And so what we're going to do, because we've already downloaded those packages, we've uploaded those packages into the actual program here, as followed by the previous video. What we're going to do is from Beautiful Soup, so I'll just uh, pull up a few things here that I can see. So from Beautiful Soup, from BS4, see it's come up there, Beautiful Soup 4, and we always should use our things like that. Uh, import the Beautiful Soup package, and as you can see, I'm clicking on there. So we're going to insert beautiful soup. Um, so that actually brings it into this particular program. And then we're going to import another one of those things that we uh, uploaded, which was requests. And as you can see, it already comes up like that. So we're going to import those requests. So that's just the standard thing that we need to do to actually get it to start looking well. I'm going to actually look at a web page or something like that. We're going to get our source for that web page. Uh, and the source, as you can see, it's coming up beautifully here with the IntelliSense. Our source equals requests uh, dot get. That means that we're actually going to go and grab something. So we're going to go and grab the data from a particular web page or URL and you'll see get URL see there and the URL that we are going to get is actually a um, a web page called uh, Corey MS and he is a web designer and he is also somebody who teaches us how to deal with Python and how to do web scraping, etc. He show, has some brilliant videos in there. And I'm actually taking one of his videos right now and I'm kind of breaking it down so that you can actually understand it. Um, because he is fairly complex in the way he deals with it. Feel free to go and look at those videos. He is fairly intense in those videos as in there's a lot of detail so I'm just breaking it down so that you understand it a little bit more but certainly I recommend going to coreyms.com uh, highly uh, for your understanding so his particular web page is um, https um, coreyms.com and you'll notice how it's got a forward slash there accidentally get rid of that forward slash otherwise it's not going to work so we've got https forward slash forward slash coreyms.com no forward slash after there okay so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to make the the request actually print out some text for us so then our soup which is the way beautiful soup works equals beautiful soup I know this is a weird thing to say soup uh, they just enjoyed using the word um, soup. The soup is the source. And the source is going to be in the um, LXML uh, style. Okay. So there we go. And then we're going to print the soup. Okay. So there is our program now provided I've spelled everything correctly provided I haven't made a mistake which could happen and I'm quite happy for it to happen I'll debug it with you which is really good for you to see if I've made a mistake but if I haven't made a mistake then it's spelled correctly and everything's in line let's have a look provided that happens I can run it and it'll work now if it comes up red I've made a mistake 
Ah, it hasn't, it's come up white. And you can see here is the code uh, from um, Corey, um, from Corey MS. And if I was to look carefully, I should be able to find um, Corey MS in there. But this is not very pretty. There's a lot of stuff in there. So I'm just going to pre prettyfy it. So the way I do it is I write dot prettyfy. Oh, not y. Prettyfy. Um, open brackets, close brackets. So I've got a number of brackets here. I've got a bracket here, open, close bracket, and a close bracket here. Now let's run it and it will just look that much better. And you can see as I've done it, it's kind of embedded everything into nice, beautiful angles here. Um, and uh, we can see what's going on here. And if you look carefully through here, you should be able to find uh, his name somewhere here. Let's have a look. Oh, that's schema.org, so he's used a link there. Um, in this Python programming video, we'll be learning how to run code parallel. Let's have a look here. Uh, in this video, we'll be learning how to extract zip files. Uh, we'll be learning how to download out. Let's have a look up here. Um, so basically, zip files. Let's see if we can find that zip file one. Uh, runs threads, um, threading and multiprocessing difference between it. We'll be learning how to run external commands. He's got a lot of tutorials here. Um, so it'll be one of these. We'll learn how to set Python. So you can kind of see as you do it in this video, we'll be learning how to run code in parallel. It'll be one of these videos. So I've actually grabbed that data off there, which is pretty awesome. So then what I want you to do is I want you to then go to a number of different websites. I'd like you to go to say 20 different websites and change the code in here, right? Change it to, you know, google.com, change it to a Wikipedia page or something like that. And the very important thing here is that I'm wanting you to learn your limitations of what you can do and what you can't do. So when it doesn't work, it possibly is that you've misspelled something in here. It possibly is that it won't work for that particular page. So you're just going to experiment to see which pages it can work for. All right, so that's your task for today. And uh, I will see you next video.